Hello, I'm Gil, developer of Back to the Streets. On the previous devlog I spoke about Evolution Engine, which was cancelled and is now open source on GitHub. On this devlog I'll talk a little about the prototypes made back in 2014. I wanted to see how Unity features could boost the development of a bitmap, map and how reliable would it be. This is one of the test scenes, the 3D one. Here's Axel. He is rotated 10 degrees. This is a little trick because since it's a 2D sprite it must be looking at the camera and the camera is also rotated 10 degrees. So it won't look squeezed. Here's a collision box. Only the sprite is rotated. Uh, or everything else in the game is in, in the 3D world. Um, the animations are uh, frame animation, of course. Let's see the, um, the hitboxes. Okay. Hitboxes can be edited uh, on the editor easily. Like, uh, let's do some, some changes here. Okay. Um, other than the hitboxes of, of the attacks, we can change, we can actually um, call animation events here. The animation events are calls to the, to the game codes. So, for example, can play sounds, apply physics, and actually control anything that can happen during an animation. So, for example, um, here at this frame, uh, the character does a little jump. It's a little impulse on, on the vertical axis. And we can just do whatever we want. So let's pick like a uh, flip. We can flip at this frame and then let's uh, maybe um, move forward a little at some horizontal impulse and some frames after let's stop the, the, the velocity of the character and let's see let's let's try it here comes the enemies See the changes, it flips to the other side, move and stop. Let's for instance remove the flip and move this, this a little forward, okay, now it doesn't flip anymore. So it's very easy to to tweak um, the the way the animations work, the hitboxes and the, the physics and everything that that the animations uh, need to be to, to work properly. Other than the than that, we also we can also uh, define all the the way the character change. Uh, from one stance to another. This is the animations graph with all the transitions between them. There are a lot of them, uh, attacks, uh, air moves, and whatever. Uh, so for example, if the character is standing and there is some input movements, it changes from standing to walk or for example, if we are walking and there is a special button pressed, uh, it changed to offensive special, and so on. So there is no restriction on what animations we have. There is no predefined uh, way of of uh, creating characters. They can have uh, whatever animations we want and move from one to another in any particular way. Let's, for example, 
hack a little bit on his ease and uh, if if the character gets hit uh, it, it moves it, it, it instantly does a defensive special it's just an example of a, a quick change that we can do okay see so it's very easy to, to change the behavior of the characters So it's very easy to to create actually create new characters or new new behavior, all the physics, all the stuff. The game code is is only a set of rules of logical rules about uh, how the physics work, how the collisions or how the hits work, and then all the character uh, behavior and the way it works is is done on the visual editor. It's really easy, really quick to, to create stuff and to tweak stuff. It's great. The other thing I wanted to show is how the scroll paths work. The camera follows this yellow line as close as possible to the character and the enemy spawn at the red dot. So uh, the first path, this scene has three paths. And the first path locks the camera from this point to this point. Let me add one point here and add some coordinates here, something like this. So, so in with this path, once the character moves through this this place, the camera will move away from him. Okay, we can see it. Okay, so the camera will move away and if I go back the camera moves in again and you can see here this this uh, blue line followed by this yellow this white line it's locking the screen And it's following the character. That's where the where the camera is pointing at. Now for the the enemy spawning. Uh, this path only have two enemies. The first spawns at two seconds, and the second enemy will spawn once the the first one is killed. It will spawn zero seconds after the first enemy is killed. So this is a sequence. Uh, those are sequential events, but we can have here a parallel event, for for instance, with three enemies spawning all at once. Actually, let me make them spawn just a little bit one after the other, but they will be the the three enemies will be active all at the same time. Let me uh, move this uh, a little bit. So they, they spawn close to each other. It's there. Okay. So you can see after two seconds, the first enemy will come. One, two. Now the, the second enemy will show up. And now three enemies at once. One, two, and three. Okay. Once the first scene is cleared, the second scene will show up. And the first event of the second uh, path is that go, go blinking animation. And that's basically it. So this is uh, very simple to create uh, groups of enemies spawning. This looks like a good approach for uh, scene creation. Go the next scene, next uh, path. Sorry, uh, lots of enemies. 
So it is really easy to create and to uh, tweak the location, spawning locations. Uh, I think this was a good idea. So, the good things are, all content is done through the Unity Editor. It is very quick to create and tweak characters and levels. The bad things are, at the time Unity animations weren't as developed as they are today, they was unstable, slight changes on the frame rate could cause really bad glitches on character logics. Every time a new Unity version came out, something changed on animation system and I had to reassemble all animations again. Animation events were limited on the kind of arguments we can pass. Plus it wasn't possible to reuse the same character logics for different models or skins. So if I wanted to do a 3D version of Axel with the same animations, I couldn't reuse the logics of the 2D Axel. I had to replicate everything again. Also, 3D animations didn't support animation events, breaking the, the, pur the purpose of this work. So it was a cool prototype, proved the concept, and I took most of the ideas and learnings to the later back to the streets project. On the next devlog, I'll talk about the Netplay framework of BTTS and some prototypes done with it as a proof of concept. Thank you very much and see you next month!